Hey, Rod, tell us a little bit about why we were doing this work in Spring Hill. I'm really glad you asked, Trevor, because our vision for learning is that we ensure high levels of learning in the areas of academic preparation, career preparation, as well as social and emotional learning. Yeah. And you know, it's so important in all professions for the professionals to talk together, to get the different experts to communicate to make the best decision for their people. And that's exactly what we want to do for our students. Let's get the teachers together so they can talk about kids, talk about best practices, and that's the vision for this district. You're absolutely right. Our board gave us the goal of being one of the best in, one of the, best in the state. Yep. And if we're going to do that, then we have to begin giving our teachers the opportunity to collaborate, work on what they want students to learn, but also know what does that learning truly look like. Yeah. And th it takes time to do that. And this is going to give us the opportunity to do that so that all students have those high levels of learning. That's great. Well, hey, Karen, if you could tell us a little bit about the specific times for elementary, middle school, and high school during this PLC work. Absolutely, Trevor. I'm glad you asked me that because this is very exciting. We're yeah. making some really great changes here. And there was a lot of thought and planning that went into this to make it the best learning decision that yep. could be made for every grade level. The elementary is going to have early release time, 26 Wednesdays of the school year. Yes. At the secondary level, they're going to have late starts because research shows that that is better for students as they get into yeah. the adolescent years. So there will be late start, again, 26 Wednesdays of the year, and the district is trying to serve everybody's needs That's and wonderful. do the best for the teachers and the students. Hey, Tammy, tell us a little bit about the elementary work and what's going to be going on during that early dismissal time. Well, we'll dismiss at 2.10, and there's two options during that time. You can either come choose to come pick up your child at 2.10, or we will dismiss like normal at 3.10. Um, if you choose to come at 3.10, then we will have activities that the White Care and our staff are putting together, um, which includes uh, things like STEM activities. Okay. It includes some physical activity that they will provide for students, as well as some possibly some time to do homework. But we want to make that an extension of our school day. Wonderful. And one of the things that I'm hearing is that it's going to be our staff that the kids already know that are working with the kids. Yes. Uh, our staff, our, our teachers will go and participate in the PLC process, while our paraprofessionals will be working with the Y Care staff to uh, facilitate all the activities that will be going on. So they'll have those familiar faces then? Yes. Rod, let's talk for a second about what's going to be happening during that late start time, both at Spring Hill Middle School and Woodland Springs Middle School when Y Care works with our kids. I'm glad you asked. Um, one of the things that parents really want to know is, you know, if I have to go to work and I want to send my kids to school yeah. at the normal time, what are my opportunities for my student? Because they want to know that they're cared yep. for. So we've got a, we're working with Y Care to design a system that allows students to come in, socialize with their friends, but also have time to work on homework or class projects, but then also club activities. Things designed to help kids develop leadership skills, character development, those types of things. One of the great beauties of working with the YMCA is the fact that they have a lot of team programming that's nationally developed, and they can bring that team programming to us as well. So when kids come in, it's going to be a great opportunity for them to learn. Hey Brad, could you talk for a little bit about what the high school is going to be doing during this time? Yeah, it's going to be slightly different. Um, the high school kids will not have programming by the Y um, because we really do think that they should be sleeping in. Research is very clear about that. But they're going to be able to show up at the same time and there'll be quiet study time, there'll be some socialization time, all of it's still supervised. But buses will run an hour late Students can come at least in time for that tardy bell of the first academic class, and then that gives them a little bit more free time. Their independence allows them to be able to do that, whereas for our other kids, we wanted to make sure they had activities. So now you've heard a little bit from our educators about this professional learning community thing that we're doing next year. This time is an essential time for teachers to analyze student information, make educational decisions about their teaching, about intervention, about extension activities for your students. Um, this is a research-based practice in thousands of schools around the nation, uh, high-performing schools, and it has been shown to be connected to increased student performance. Um, that's what we want for kids. A lot of schools are doing this, but we're one of the few schools, uh, if not the only school, who is also looking at how do we take care of our kids during this time so that we don't inconvenience parents, um, at least as little as possible. If you have questions about this, feel free to call the district office or your schools. Uh, they'd be glad to help fill you in on it. Thank you.